this video, we're gonna be talking about AI art. Again, I talked about AI art in the last video and I'm gonna talk about AI art in this video. So this is tweeted out by the Pokemon TCG, AKA the Pokemon trading card game. The top 300 quarter finalists in the Pokemon illustration contest 2024 have been announced. Woo! Take a look at their glorious artwork and celebrate their incredible achievements alongside them here. If you guys didn't know what this competition was, every year, Pokemon TCG releases a list of Pokemon characters that you can draw. And if you do draw them, then you have a chance to win your artwork on a Pokemon card. Super sick. I almost entered and then I forgot about it. So let's look at the beautiful entries from round one. They give you a select amount of Pokemon. I think it's like six, which is why there are so many. I forgot how you call this guy, but there's so many of like one type of Pokemon. Oh, what is this? Why is there like so many art pieces from a name that sounds so similar. There's Vigen K, Vigo K, Vigo, I'm not gonna pronounce that correctly. I apologize already. Vigo, I'm also not gonna pronounce this correctly. This is tweeted out by Racy Beat. Can we talk about how these entries are clearly from the same person breaking the three submission limit and happen to be in a very AI adjacent style? So in case you guys didn't know, yes, there is a submission limit for this competition. You can only submit three pieces because they didn't want people flooding all the submissions with all of their art. Oh, and the theme was creating magical moments in Pokemon. This is the screenshot. So alongside the three that I showed you, they also made two Pikachu pieces too. Under the name Vigen K, Vigen Cachadorian, I think is how you say their name. Then we have Vigo K, Vigo Cachadorian. There's six pieces that made it through, all under the same or very similar alias. So there's two issues to this already. The first issue is with them already breaking the rules of the three submission limit and then sneaking through. The second issue is the AI art. In my opinion, this is the same person that submitted. You could argue, oh, what if it's all like different people um, submitting and they all just happen to have the same name? Except the style looks really similar too because this is like the AI art style. AI art has a specific, specific, specific style. A style of really, really excessive highlights in places that you typically wouldn't see highlights to be in alongside a very, very anime style rendering alongside a really, really poorly put together background. Like there will be a background that looks on first glance, highly detailed. And yet when you zoom in, there's blobs that make very little sense in terms of the placement. People are gonna immediately jump and be like, oh my God, no, what if it's not AI? Like what if it's just a person and this is their art style? Da -da 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 -da. We can walk through their art pieces and I can point out elements in their art piece that makes it look like it was made by AI. That are elements in their art that you often do not see artists doing. And I'm just gonna add 50,000 disclaimers I know it's boring. I'm just gonna add all the disclaimers early so that people who don't like to watch the entirety of the video before they leave comments can kind of get the point, okay? This drama and controversy is about a Pokemon art competition to where you can have your art featured on Pokemon cards and somebody was using AI art in their entry. Allegedly, let me be clear when I say this. The things that I will point out are mistakes that genuine artists can make. These are mistakes that beginner artists can make. The stuff that I'm going to say about their art, I am not trying to discourage beginner artists. I am not trying to belittle beginner artists. I myself am an artist. We have all been there. I have been somebody that was drawing people with wonky hands, with no necks, with really, really bad anatomy. I've been there, I've done that. I've made the anatomy mistakes. The issue is when art is presented at a quality and a level in terms of the rendering that should indicate this person is an established artist with a lot of experience that wouldn't make these mistakes. And yet they have also a lot of beginner mistakes that look really suspicious. The issue is when you take this large pile of beginner mistakes they're making, combine it with a level of rendering that would indicate they're not a beginner, and tie everything together, that is why it appears they're using AI art, okay? If you are somebody who makes these mistakes as an artist, that doesn't mean you're using AI art. Nobody is going to falsely accuse you of using AI art if you happen to have wonky looking hands or um, ears that don't match on your model or whatever you're drawing. And me saying this, I'm probably gonna get a lot of other people that are gonna comment, well, what if they just really learn how to render and that's the only thing they learn how to do and they didn't learn anatomy. I have seen artists who have learned how to render and did not learn anatomy and you can tell they are a human artist. There is just some aspects that indicate this art is made by AI that human artists don't do. Even if it's a human artist that only learned how to render and did not learn a single thing about anatomy, there is like a look to it. Those are my disclaimers about AI art. The stuff that I'm going to say about their artwork is not trying to discourage beginner artists, okay? We've all been there. The stuff that I'm gonna point out, it's when everything is done together.
that makes it look like AI art. Black sugar pill, I think the thing a lot of people don't realize is that even if it's a mistake an artist can do, a lot of why the mistake is clearly AI is because the logic behind the mistakes don't make sense and are completely illogical to the rest of the piece in comparison to the rest of the rendering. That is the point that I keep trying to make. It's just that the level of rendering doesn't match the level of mistakes that are made. It is like beginner, beginner mistakes, which again, everyone who's an artist has probably made those mistakes, have drawn the wonky hands, I've done it. But the level of rendering that they have indicates they're a professional artist with a lot of experience. So a professional artist with a lot of experience, you rarely would find them drawing wonky fingers and, you know, ears that don't connect to the head. You're telling me a beginner artist can draw with a fisheye lens perspective, which is notably probably the hardest perspective to draw with as an artist, but yet they gave Pikachu like fingers that melt into his face. People might argue, what if it's a beginner mistake, blah, 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 blah. This is an art competition you're submitting for. I didn't submit to this competition because I forgot, right? But for those of you guys that did submit, I'm sure you guys double, triple, quadruple checked your artwork because you want Pokemon to approve it. So therefore you would double, triple, quadruple check to make sure there aren't mistakes that would potentially get them to downvote your art or not pass it through. This is something that you would try really hard in so that these mistakes, even if you often do make mistakes like this, you would probably not make it for this competition, right? So anyways, we can look a little bit more elaborately into their artwork. Okay, I'm just going to point out a few aspects of this person's art as to why it makes it AI. Or the first one is Eevee's tail just melting into the clouds. This is a mistake that AI tends to make because when AI elements overlap, AI gets confused and will bleed one thing into another. Like when AI was probably trying to draw the sky and then was also trying to add the Eevee tail and it blended the two together like this. The second one is the random lines on Eevee's face. I'm guessing AI was trying to show that Eevee's underwater by adding like the water reflections. You know how water kind of has like a, a little like blobby shape to it and it will reflect from the sunlight onto the face. And then there's just like instead just streaks, like a bunch of spaghetti on Eevee's face. More streaks on the underside of Eevee's palm, which the water reflections shouldn't hit on the underside of Eevee's arm if the sun is streaming top down. Which on a side note, I don't know why there's like two love discs facing straight down and then the other love disc is going this way. Why are two love discs just like drowning? There's nothing wrong if you make lighting mistakes. There's nothing wrong with having an art style that uses excessive highlights. I do that. My art uses excessive highlights because I think it looks pretty. Again, the issue is when you combine all of these mistakes together, it starts looking like AI art. The issue is not if you do one or the other or even a couple of these. It's all of these together alongside the anatomy mistakes that AI tends to make. That's what makes it AI. Here is the second piece. It's the line work because AI has a tendency to do line work with extremely varying thicknesses. The mountain is kind of thick and then it thins out and then it thickens again and then it thins out. You could argue it's an art style. I could believe you if it's an art style, except the line work then doesn't happen for Eevee. Eevee's line work is very consistent with the same thickness of pen throughout with some minor thickness changes, but it's very minor. But you're telling me the mountain thickness is going to give in and out, in and out, in and out like this. That's something that's pretty indicative of AI art alongside everything we just saw with the first EV piece. Then we have this EV piece. Like I said before, AI has a tendency when things overlap with other elements to bleed the two together because AI cannot, you know, distinguish the two. An example or two examples is the cherry blossoms touching the ears, right? When the cherry blossom flows across Eevee, it flows across the ears. There's no line work now for this cherry blossom. It just bleeds into the line work of the ear. Same with this cherry blossom, right? It looks like Eevee's ear has a big pimple on it, except I'm sure this is supposed to be a cherry blossom leaf. But an artist with this level of skill, an artist who is capable of drawing in a fisheye perspective, which is a very difficult perspective to draw in, would probably not draw the cherry blossom leaf like this. They would either shift it upwards so it doesn't intersect with the ear or remove it entirely so it doesn't intersect with the ear or fully line it so that like you can separate the cherry blossom leaf from the ear. Hadi, the mountain one, if that was just it, I would say that could be normal as my lines thin and thicken out in places on my gingerbread man artwork. Yeah, like I could argue, you know, very line thicknesses could just be an art style. But with that level of skill and have two different ones in that Eevee and Mountain Imagine, that is my opinion AI art. I agree too. I just think it's everything combined that makes it AI art. Some people have a style that does really varied line thicknesses. There's different brushes that will vary your line thickness depending on how much pressure you apply. That, there's nothing wrong with that. But typically if you use a brush like that, that would be a brush you would use throughout the entirety of your piece. So the entirety of your piece would have varied line thicknesses throughout it because it's just your style. And all of your art pieces would then contain that, right? Because it's your style. But it doesn't make sense that there's a lot of stylistic inconsistencies throughout the art pieces, but it somehow still maintains an anime-esque quality to it.
But again, there's some other arc inconsistencies in this piece. One with the amount of fluffs in Evie's ear. Like this fluff, you know, ha there's three here, but this one they only drew two. And then there's also random highlights on the inside of the ear. But with the placement of the ears, the highlights wouldn't really reach in the inside of the ear. Again, a lot of people are going to be like, Kat, you just like anal and you're an art perfectionist and you hate on beginner artists and artists that make mistakes. If you use your eyeballs, if you look at this, you're going to tell me that somebody who can render this quality and draw in a fisheye lens perspective is a beginner artist. And they're entering a Pokemon art competition, which again, you would probably double, triple, quadruple check to make sure your art is perfect before submitting, right? So that there aren't these like inconsistencies and minor errors in the artwork that they could potentially reject you from moving on to the next round with. Then we have our fourth piece, which again, guys, can we just point out the differences between pieces? If this is this person's art style, why does Eevee look different between all four art pieces? You could argue, oh, what if they just have like an inconsistent art style? I do too. I have a pretty inconsistent art style. But you're telling me you're going to draw Eevee different in every photo? Like here, Eevee has like a tuft of hair on its head. And like tufts of hair coming out of its ears on the bottom but then this eevee only has like one cowlick but then this eevee has like an entire tuft of head hair eevee is gifted by the hair gods over here but this eevee is clean bald with just one little cowlick and no tufts beneath the ears like this yeah and this vimporium people kept making fun of this vimporium for this piece because it looks so out of place perspective wise i think what was trying to happen ego or whomever that person is might have drawn in the vaporian themselves because the style of the vaporian actually doesn't really match anything else look at the style of the vaporian versus the style of the eevee in one art piece the two styles of the pokemon are so different and i don't want to hear the argument oh what if they have an inconsistent art style in the same art piece that you're going to submit to a pokemon competition you would change the style between pokemon on your drawing oh yeah and the reflection in the water doesn't match but we're gonna see an even worse offender of bad reflections okay also again let me just point out ai has a tendency when one thing bleeds behind another thing or when two elements overlap to just make it disappear look at this eevee's ear and look at the length of eevee's ear very long very tall and proud very fluffy so cute look at this eevee's ear though this one the right ear disappears behind a leaf and then just is gone this ear is way shorter and fatter than the other ear and people may say, uh, maybe it's a beginner mistake. They're not good at proportions. You're telling me you can draw water like this? With all these different colors, the sunlight reflection streaming in, all these flowers on the side, but then you can't get the thickness of Eevee's ears and the length the same. Also, the eyes are different shapes too. This eye is completely oval and this eye points out here. And then we have their Pikachu artwork, which is the biggest offender of bad reflections over here. It is almost like they're doing like a one-to-one -one flip of the reflection but there should be some sort of distortion to it. And also, oddly though, they drew the reflection for Pikachu and then they drew the reflection for one foot and one of his hips, but not the other foot. Over here, is this a rock? Is this a snail? And then the biggest one again, the same error that always happens in AI artwork is the hands. If we look at Pikachu's hands, this Pikachu has three fingers and a thumb. This Pikachu has the, the right hand is a little off and then the hand just bleeds into the face. There's just a line here that I think AI was supposed to try to like make the arm continue upwards, but the arm starts down here. So it just gave up and <laughs> failed. AI, again, has a tendency to use a thousand random, but very, very similar colors. Look at the cheeks of this Pikachu, how one cheek is coral, but one cheek is actually red. This is a very orangey color, but this is a very pinkish red. And then Pikachu's drooling. <laughs> for some reason. And yeah, the water on the ears are weird. Look at this one. Because again, AI has a tendency when one thing intersects another to just bug out and fuck up both parts of the drawing. It's raining, but the rain looks like it's kind of chopping Pikachu's ear off. And then there's just this water dripping down the side of Pikachu's ear. But it again looks like it's a porcelain Pikachu that somebody cracked the ear off and then re-glued it back on. And then another weird water droplet dripping down. And then the feet. Why does he have like bunions? I don't know, they gave him one ball, only one ball. Our poor mans couldn't even get two. People might hear this and be like, oh my god, Kat, you're just making fun of new artists. Like, you're such a bully. Homie, you mean to look at this. Somebody who could draw a composition this well, and you're telling me that they're gonna give Pikachu a one ball. This is clearly AI art. I am not the type of person that would make fun of artists. I do not, I am an artist myself. I love supporting artists. I love shopping from small businesses. I love artists. I am not making fun of artists. This person is using AI art and then submitted it into a competition and took six spots, by the way, six spots from six hardworking actual artists that made beautiful pieces that didn't get in. I saw some of the pieces of people that didn't get in and they're gorgeous. And then you have this Pikachu with one nut just somehow snuck in. Another giveaway is the fact that the raindrops are all going in different directions. Like, do you see here? 
there's one raindrop going this way, then there's one raindrop going down, then there's one raindrop going this way, and there's one raindrop going back down, and this raindrop is going this way, and this one's going straight down. An artist who is capable of drawing a whole bunch of leaves and vines and framing plants like this with water that is rendered this well, barring the weird reflection, is able to draw rain in the same direction, okay? And then we have this Pikachu, which is this guy's sixth submission. Look at the stadium lights up here and how they are all crooked. All of the stadium lights are pointing in different directions. By the way, if we look in the background, not a single thing in the background is an actual person. These are blobs. Artists are lazy. I am an artist. I am very lazy. I like to cut corners whenever possible. But typically artists would make some attempt at making it look humanoid. These aren't even like people. There is a person up here. There is one dude up here in the lights. Again, if a human artist would not draw one random dude up here standing amongst the lights we can see up here the top of the stadium is completely wonky with really really random lines like this looks like a spider web up here the floor that pikachu is standing on just has some divots has some cuts like i don't know pikachu used thunderbolt so hard it literally broke the stage the stuff that i'm saying is not making fun of artists who make these mistakes i am not trying to make fun of artists who you know draw a line and then you forget to connect it behind the ear and then you restart it and it's all broken i've done that i've literally been there i've drawn really wonky looking backgrounds i don't draw backgrounds I my art for a reason is because I suck at it, okay? Uh, the crooked lights, you know, is mistakes that I've made. But the thing is, when you combine all of this together, it is so clearly AI art. The combination of the random guy up here in the stadium lights, alongside all of the crooked stadium lights, alongside all of the non-people people in this crowd, at least like a couple of the front ones, you might render them to look a little bit humanoid and then just draw blobs in the back. Alongside the stage being completely cracked and broken with divots and this, that, and the third. All of this combined, alongside all of this guy's other alleged real artwork, allegedly, makes this AI. It is all way too sus. And the combination of everything together doesn't match up with the level of supposed skill this artist should have. Let me once again show you the compilation of all this person's pieces side by side. This is high level rendering. This is high level composition in the fisheye lens perspective, another fisheye lens perspective, like kind of like a slanted perspective here. All of these perspectives, all of these compositions would indicate this person has a high level of skill. You cannot draw something in a fisheye lens perspective unless you've basically mastered anatomy and proportions. It is really, 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 really difficult to draw in this perspective. And yet somehow this person is able to do it. But this person also somehow gives Pikachu one nut and has the reflection of only one foot and is making a lot of glaring errors that are errors beginner artists make, right? That I made as a beginner. But... This person with this level of rendering who can draw on a fisheye lens perspective is not a beginner artist. They are somebody who's using AI. But the worst part about all of this, guys, is again, this is a competition from Pokemon where you're competing to see who can get their art on a Pokemon card. They picked the top 300 quarterfinalists. This person had six AI art entries that snuck through and took the spot from legitimate artists. Six legitimate artists that worked really hard to make their pieces didn't get their pieces through because this guy went to AI, typed in Eevee, and got what was the output. And there's a lot of comments under this tweet. We have somebody like Anna CDS 2012 stating, in any doubt, think about the little details. Why would a human make this? Look at the people in the back on the flowers, the fruit. Of course, human art isn't perfect, but those little things would help. Exactly. Why would a human put a guy in the lights up on the top of the stage? Some people might argue, what if they were just drawing blobs and it accidentally blobbed into the shape of a human? But again, take that with everything else that's happening here. It's all about context. And this guy in the stands, in context with all of the other vicious AI errors that are extremely similar to errors AI art makes, does not add up. Why would a human spend all of this time and effort making a very spider webby looking ceiling when artists a lot of times are lazy? We just cut corners, okay? And nobody's gonna look at the ceiling. So I would just draw like a C shape into some legs and call it a day. I feel like most artists would do that. They probably wouldn't go through this length to add all these random holes into the top of the stage for some reason. Why would an artist draw a fruit rock snail thing in this corner? Dami says, style and such so it's not impossible. But if doing that kind of digital art, I don't think a human would make the floodlights so uneven. And again, if you're being really lazy, maybe you can make a bunch of uneven lights. This is a competition to win your art on a Pokemon card. I feel like given this context, you would probably put in a bunch of effort into making sure they're 
pretty straight looking, right? Obviously, they might be a little crooked here or there. Obviously, take a look at my Moira art. The eyes don't even match in this piece that I did when I was 17 years old. It wouldn't be to this level of like glaringly bad. I'm going to add a disclaimer. In the terms of bad, again, all these negative things that I'm saying about this art is not in relative to beginner artists. If I see a beginner artist make these mistakes, I don't think, oh my God, this person is so bad. It is because this person is using AI art that I am making fun of the art because this is AI. I would never make fun of an actual genuine human being artist. I just want to add that clarification. And then there's another tweet here. So this tweet was put up by Godmaster Bun. I will confidently say that there's AI artwork in these finalists. Vijan K has multiple submissions under different names, but the same initials and he has taken away spots from real artists who deserve to be on here. Shame on the Pokemon judges for not realizing this. I also can't believe this wasn't caught. There's thousands and thousands of entries to this competition. True. However, didn't they look at the top 300? So Bun says it's hard to prove all of these in one reply, but to start this Pikachu is probably the most obvious. One key to spot AI art is inconsistency and none of the stadium lights or crowd members have any consistency. And like we've mentioned, there's a dude up in the... And the stage lights. Yeah, this is the big one. The the tumor in Pikachu's arm. Or Konpei Mimi says, it definitely is insanely more obvious when you put all of his entries of the same Pokemon side by side. No consistency in his shape language of the Pokemon or even basics, like how many fingers he gives them in each piece. That is exactly true. You can argue somebody would have differing art styles, but you're telling me this guy can't draw the Eevee the same way in four different art pieces? Typically, there would be some consistencies with the amount of fingers Eevee has in like each drawing of Eevee. Yeah, this is the biggest one though. From Poru Asis or Por Poru Asicus. I think I'm saying it right. Found proof it's AI generated. The only way I know how? By counting fingers. You could argue maybe this person's style somehow changed piece by piece for some reason, but you're telling me in one piece he gave Eevee four fingers. But here he gave Eevee three fingers or three toes, I guess, because, you know, it's a paw. So in light of this, I want to highlight some cool artists that made, you know, actual art that entered the competition that didn't get in. So we have Jackie Gaming Art. They made this sleeping Eevee piece. They said, I'm still really disappointed to see so many talented human artists get effed by the amount of AI entries in place and said, I poured my heart and soul into this and they didn't get top 300. But look at how cute their art is. Like this cute little sleeping Eevee. Oh my gosh, so cute. Look at the cushion. Wow, this is so nicely rendered. Eevee looks very soft and very fuzzy. It's so pretty. Yeah, this didn't get in. We have this one from Versiris or Verse Iris, I think is how you say their name. Here's one of my entries for the Pokemon TCG art context for Farah Lee. Oh, I can't say that right. I didn't get into the top 300, but I really tried hard on this one. I hope it shows. This is so cute. Oh my God, wait, it's the little guy sleeping on top of the bigger guy. This was their other entry. My other entry for the Pokemon art contest, Absol. Sad I didn't get selected. This didn't get in. This looks so good. The little swooshy, like I like how circular this looks. It just itches my brain very nicely. The sharp edges mix with the circular shape of it. Just so pretty. Wait, this is so cute. This clearly, obviously made by Quartz is made by a human artist. It's so pretty. I love how sparkly this is. The colors, the little like swirl here, so pretty. Little trap dish down here. I love the way you rendered these rocks too. The rocks look very edible. So this didn't get in, but the AI art did. Wait, and this is from the actual Route 111 music when you catch these Pokemon. <gasps> See, this is the thing, right? When you take human art and then compare it to AI art, human art, every single element that is added to the art has intent and detail. Like you said, these music notes are actually from the Route 111 music when you catch the Pokemon. It's intent and detail. The little trap niche is detail. It's put there on purpose to add extra information, the attention and detail that human artists can have versus AI art. Again, with AI art, there's no intention, attention to detail. There's no rhyme or reason why things are added. Like there's just a little rock here that is a rock slash snail slash gumdrop with no rhyme or reason. We have drowning love discs over here on this piece, no rhyme or reason. Look at your trap niche, very cute. There's a reason why trap niche is there. You know, they're kind of like looking at each other, drowning for no reason back here. In this Pikachu piece, there's just a guy up here. AI art has no life. Like there's literally no life, no soul in this piece, but there's a lot of life and soul and meaning and purpose in this piece and intention behind the elements you used and the colors that you chose for everything. Again, let's highlight some other like really cool artists that didn't make it. We have um, Genis Ice Cream. I'm not saying anybody's name right out here, right? Look at these. This one is so pretty. Wow. I love it kind of looks has like a papery vibe to it with like the no liner But like the shading elements this looks really good. This looks so pretty. Wow Oh my god, the little trap ditch back here, too and then the sleeping little Eevee. Oh, this is so cute. See, again, human art has so much intention behind it. It's a sleeping Eevee with all the Eeveelutions like circling around it in a very dreamlike fashion. Wow, so pretty. There's so much thought behind this. This would be like a really cool poster on a wall. Wait, look at this person's art. This person's handle is Matthias JB. My entries for this year didn't make it this round, but excited to try again next time. Wow, wait, I love the colors on this. The jumping Pikachu, the swirls. Wow. 
Oh, the Bidoof. Oh my God, Bidoof standing on a little tr a little log. I love the little glows coming out of Bidoof. I forgot the name of this Pokemon, but so pretty. You see this? Like this again, clearly is not AI. It's clearly drawn by a human being. Everything put in here with is with a lot of intention. The color choice, the sketching, the textures in this art piece, the cross hatching that's added for extra texture. It looks gorgeous, yummy, delicious. So we have four leaf island. Oh, wait, this is so cute. Look at the story. See? Ah, oh, so cute. I love art that tells a story. Here's an example of a human who is drawing with a fisheye perspective again. Fisheye perspective is really difficult to draw. Wait, look at the little puffy birds up here. I forgot the name of these guys again. But Evie is stealing a croissant. There's a little story being told here. The guy's like, oop. Wait, look at this little guy. Oh, look at this. The green is so cute. How it found a four leaf clover amongst the rest of the clovers. The Absol performing tricks. These are so cute. I hope that me, by showing you these human artists, not only when you look at this, you can appreciate their beautiful art. If you like their art, you should go drop them a follow and leave nice comments under their posts, you know, to give them a little algorithm bump. But as you can see, there's a big difference in an art piece. Let me highlight the Eevee one because this one's my favorite, even though all of them are amazing. There's a big difference between an art piece like this and something like this. Or let's use the drowning one. I think the drowning one's the funniest. The drowning love, st love, love discs. But something like this, you know, where there's like no rhyme or reason or intention with anything placed in this piece. Evie's tail is melting into the sky. There's random little spaghetti streaks on its face. It has three paws, but in another art piece, it has four. There's drowning love discs above me. There's no soul or heart or intention in a piece like this. But this one? So cute. And at the end of the day, this sucks for a number of reasons, okay? It sucks for the six genuine human artists that could have made it through that would have a shot at winning the final prize which is money getting your art on a card you know other opportunities but they lost those opportunities because this one dude snuck in his ai art so he took six spots from genuine artists and again stuff like this again sucks because it discourages beginner artists from being beginners with the prevalence of AI art, I've heard the narrative that a lot of beginner artists are scared to be beginners and they're scared to make beginner art mistakes for fear of being called out for using AI. Like what I'm doing to that person, how I'm calling out this person for using AI. I'm just going to try to reassure your fears in the best way possible. I don't want to sound demeaning, but if you're a beginner artist and you make beginner mistakes, beginner art has a look to, to it that anybody with eyeballs can basically distinguish you are a beginner artist. Do beginner artists make the mistakes that I pointed out from this artist? Yes, beginner artists sometimes will, you know, have anatomy issues. You'll have like rocks that don't quite look like rocks. You're going to have crooked stage lights. You're going to have wrong number of fingers. Happens. I was a beginner artist too. I'm an artist. I gone through all the steps. I made the same mistakes. I again have this Moira drawing where her eyes are literally not the same shape whatsoever. We have this piece where the eyes are just all wonky. Like this eye is not balanced whatsoever. Um, where is the rendering? Where is the blending? I don't know. We have this one. Um, this thumb is really jagged for some reason and very wonky shaped and loppy and the rest of her hair like there's like gaps here. But come on guys, if you take one look at this art piece, you're not going to think AI art made this because it clearly looks like a beginner made it. The level of rendering, the level of anatomy, and everything else combined together using context clues indicates that a beginner artist made this. I made this like within my first year of doing um, digital art. The issue with AI art and why it, it indicates it's AI art is the level of rendering and composition of the piece is that of somebody with a lot of art experience. This level of rendering, this level of composition is that of a pro artist or somebody with a lot of art experience would render and compose pose a piece like this with a fisheye lens perspective. But they're somehow still making beginner mistakes like having Evie's tail melt into the sky, having drowning love discs above me, and weird streaky lines across the face. That is how it indicates it's AI art. And even better or worse in this case, because we have six pieces of them to look at, we can compare all of their art pieces together that has so many inconsistencies between pieces that indicates it's AI. And again, some people may argue, what if they just have like a, a varying art style? You can again, look at my beginner art. The art style flips piece by piece because I was learning how to draw. So therefore I couldn't be consistent with the style. Look at this style. And then I would draw something like this with more anime eyes. 
and then stuff like this with absolutely no chin whatsoever. But come on, man, there is clearly 3,000 anatomy mistakes happening in this piece. But again, the level of rendering would indicate this is also made by a beginner. So again, the stuff that I said and me harping on this person's mistakes, being like, they did this wrong, they did this wrong. I am not trying to say this to make fun of beginner artists. If you are an artist that makes these mistakes and you're a human being, you're fine. That's not the issue here. I love artists. Artists make mistakes all the time or you will make like artistic choices is that objectively may be not the best looking thing, but it's done from an artistic point of view because you like the way this looks. I like the way excessive highlights look. So I excessively highlight my pieces. Is it anatomically correct? No. Do people have really, really shiny eyelids? No, but I like it. So I do it, right? But the, the things that I'm harping on this person about and making fun of their art, it's because they use AI. I'm making fun of how the AI generated it really badly. I'm not trying to say these things to try to discourage beginner artists or make fun of beginner artists or even more experienced artists in any way. If you're a human being, keep making your art. I love looking at pretty art and hate how this AI art stuff kind of ruining actual people's art, you know? Six people didn't make it into this competition because this one dude stuck in six AI art pieces. Not only did he stick in more than the allotted three he was supposed to stick in, they were all six of them were AI. That's the issue that I have here.